What's shaking, internet? Your old pal Josie Deer here. I'm not just going to be brewing a cup of coffee and showing you how to brew coffee. I'm going to be rekindling a certain nostalgia inside of myself for the sake of um, spiritual comfort during these, these weird times. So I'm going to make sort of a poor man's mocha, which is what I used to make as a child when my mother would drag me to prayer meetings. I'm going to try to put together a grown-up version of that today, and I'm going to invite you all along for the ride. There's two elements to this beverage, pretty much. Um, you know, we're going to make a coffee concentrate, and we're going to make a hot chocolate. Um, later on, we're going to assemble these two things into one delicious sort of you know, mock mocha of sorts. I've chosen to use a coffee from our workshop line, Peru El Gallucan. Um, it's a lighter roast, sort of has flavor notes of fudge, toffee, and maybe mandarin orange. Um, it's a delicious, delicious coffee on its own, but I think it's gonna pair really well with, uh, with the hot chocolate we're gonna make in a second. Now the brewing device I'm using to brew this coffee is the Clever Dripper. We use the Clever Dripper in all our cafes to make single origin coffees. It's a pretty foolproof way of doing things. It's a little bit like a French press, it's a little bit like a pour over. Um, it fuses those two elements into, you know, one brew method that we like to call polished immersion. Um, I'm using a 1 to 10 ratio in this coffee, which is a lot stronger than a coffee you would normally drink because we're only going to use about this much coffee and about this much hot chocolate in the beverage. So, I got 27 grams of coffee here. Um, my ground particle size is, you know, it's pretty much like coarse sand, I would say. Um, it's a little bit more coarse than I would use for a normal pour over because we're using more coffee and less water. We want to get a good extraction on this. All right, I got my coffee in my filter here. You always pre-wet your filters. Always pre-wet your filters. We don't want no paper tastes inside of our coffee. All right, y'all, so our water's up to temp. Got our coffee in our Clever. 27 grams of coffee. We're gonna put in 270 milliliters of water, yeah? We'll press go on my timer. So when you start pouring, you want to pour slowly and in little circles. What we're trying to do here is create a slurry or make sure that each single granule of coffee is saturated evenly. After we have a nice muddy brew bed, we're just gonna pour a little harder right in the middle, and we're gonna cruise up to about eh, 220, and we're gonna do a couple more circles. 270 milliliters of water. I'm gonna let this go for another one minute, 40 seconds, and then we're going to decant the beverage. Peace. All right, our timer went off. It's time to decan our coffee. Um, look over here. Check it, check it. I got this sweet old Stanley Thermos, and I got my Clever. I'm gonna wiggle this just a little bit to kind of break that crust on top, and then I'm just gonna plop it right on here. Now when you do that, the coffee goes from inside, down through, and into our thermos. Um, it's also, just kind of an architectural marvel, if you think about it. Now the thermos is not just a great place to decant our coffee, it'll also keep the coffee warm while we're preparing the um, second half of our beverage, which is the hot chocolate. All right, take you over there. Go into the stove, babies. All right, we brought it over to the stove. And my God, the lighting is better over here. What's up, world? So, we're gonna make a hot chocolate portion of our beverage now. Um, this, you know, you could use baking cocoa if you wanted to add equal parts sugar to it. That's a good way to make a hot chocolate mix. I've got this bag of dark hot chocolate from our pals at Valverona um, down in Dumbo, Brooklyn. This stuff's really, really good chocolate. It's gonna make a really nice beverage. Um, for our recipe, I'm gonna use four ounces of milk, or a half a cup, and I'm gonna use one tablespoon of hot chocolate mix. Um, we'll crank on the stove, and I'm going 
to add about half of the milk at first. I'm just gonna kinda let that warm up for now. I'm gonna add our chocolate to the milk. And I'm gonna whisk it around here. You know, we're trying to dissolve all of the all the chocolate. There's little chocolate chips in here. I'm trying to make sort of a maybe a bit of a ganache before we add the rest of the milk in. Um, just gonna continually whisk this. Add the rest of the milk. Adjust that heat a little bit and just keep on cruising. Check it. Dun, 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 Dip a little pinky in there. Hot damn, that's good. Let's turn off the heat. All right, everybody, it's that blessed time when we get to assemble our beverage that we worked so hard for. So first, we'll crack into here. And we're gonna take our cup, maybe pour in, let's say one half to two thirds coffee. We're gonna top that with about one half to the one third of our hot chocolate mix. And this is pretty much the same beverage that made me fall in love with coffee back when I was just a little Josie. Cheers, y'all. Yep, that's the stuff we took. A clever dripper, a Bonavita goose snack coffee kettle, Barazza grinder, a delicious workshop coffee from Peru. We brewed the coffee, concentrated at a one to ten ratio for strength. We made a hot chocolate on the side using oat milk and hot cocoa mix. Then we fused those two drinks together into one poor man's mocha. Um, which is kind of so much more than just a comforting, delicious afternoon beverage, but, you know, it's a nostalgic trip down memory lane, and it feels kind of like a hug inside, you know? And I don't know if there's anything that we could probably use more right now as a people. Much love, everybody.